welcome to the Swedish Startup Sessions this week with Linus Olsson from Flatter and we're going to talk about one of the currently most successful startups in from Sweden and a lot also about revenue models. So stay tuned. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. Sweden, fly overseas, clear use a G, please believe the same Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa, bitch, you be thanking God. This is Sweden, I'm flying to all you ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden, you ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden, fly overseas, clear use a G, please believe the same Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa, bitch, you be thanking this is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Hi, welcome back. I'm here with Linus Olsson from Flatter. And um, tell me a little about yourself. Where do you come from? I come from a small town outside of, like one and a half hour, hours outside of uh, Gothenburg. Uh-huh. Uh, very, like a typical Swedish small town. <laughs> okay. And how did you end up in startup land? Oh, how did I end up here? I I knew Peter. Yeah. I think that's it. And Peter yeah. is Peter Sunde. Peter Sunde is one of the founders, right? Yeah. Flatter, and also known from the Pirate Bay. Yeah. That's yeah. True. So it was me, and he wanted to help with the Flatter, and I joined him. Yeah. And we started this. So you're, you're co-founders of. Flat to both of you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how you call it. Yeah. Have you been involved in in startups before, or is this is your start first startup? Uh, no, not really any startups before in the startup sense, at least. And were you before Flatter? Were you developer or were you student? Or? I am. Oh, I am. I have been everything. <laughs> I I have a background. Uh, I studied uh, media production. Okay. And been a geek since childhood and done. Mostly everything you can do with computers. Impressive, impressive. Uh, so, what about Flatter? What does Flatter do for people who are not familiar with your? Yeah, the, uh, Flatter is a very simple way to support and and give money to your favorite creators or websites. Mm -hmm. um, it works like a Facebook like button or a Twitter retweet button. Uh, but when you click it, you actually just don't say. Uh, it's good. You give some money. Yeah. Um, so it's a. Uh, so I sign up first with Flatter, and, and then you can click buttons, yeah. uh, and a click is some actual money. And how like, how much do I give? Uh, that depends on on how much you want to give. So uh, it's a bit backwards. Uh, first, you decide how much you are willing to give to go to content, mm -hmm. and then you click flatter, flatter buttons, mm -hmm. and in the end of the month we divide uh, your money. Uh, so each click gets an equal amount of the money. Okay. So when you're actually giving something, it's just one click. Uh, you okay. don't you don't need to think. Do, can I afford this? Mm. Uh, how much I have, have I given before, and so on. So you basically have a flat fee that I could say I want to give. Uh, you know, spend ten euros a yeah. month, and then you divide it. So one month, I might give ten all the ten euros to one person, and the next it's fifty yeah. persons. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how did you come up with this idea? Uh, the the uh, the idea from the beginning is Peter's. Mm -hmm. uh, he thought about how to um, reward or pay for free content or or give support to free creators that really doesn't get any money. Yeah. And then then it hasn't doesn't need to be a a um, the standard way when you either pay a fixed amount for mm -hmm. for getting something mm -hmm. or. Uh, n not paying anything for free mm -hmm. content. There should mm -hmm. there there ought to be a middleway somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, his ID. And on that. and uh, how how does um, how does how do you, the mid business model work? How do you? We have a transaction fee yeah. on on the processed payments. Mm -hmm. So it's a very um, it's rather unique as an as a startup or or internet service that it actually has a business plan or. Yeah. or, or a revenue model from yeah, start, yeah, uh, and we don't need to uh, come up with that later. No, so basically, your your main 
goal right now is just increase usage because the more usage, the more. Yeah, if we have usage, we will make money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's quite simple. Uh, and how how does uh, your markets look right now? I know that you're quite strong in Germany for some reason. Yeah, we have had the best pickup in Germany. Yeah. Um, but we are a world, we, have, we have been a worldwide service from day one. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can use it for any website, any content. We are totally content agnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, you just put your buttons on your web. It could be your blog or your um, music site or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's completely up to you. Um, and we have had good pickup in Germany, mm -hmm. um, but we're good. We are rather big in the U.S. and in Sweden and U.K. and so on. Um, and the use cases are. are more primarily built around uh, around technique mm -hmm. or, or technology, um, mainly or the main usage is blogs because yeah. it's very easy to install yeah, a yeah. plugin for WordPress and mm -hmm. uh, WordPress is like 80-90% of, of the low market. Yeah. Um, but we have a, a, a really good pickup in open source software. Okay. Um, open source software or open source developers uh, doesn't see any problem in, in, in including some technical thing on their website, mm. they know how to do it, and people uh, see a big value in open source software, yeah. so it's... it's um, could could it, I decide, like, I want to have uh, one pot of money for content and one for software? So maybe, you know, I want to give, like... Uh, As a giver? Yeah. Yeah, no, every click is, is equal, okay. but you, you can you can also do a direct donation if mm. you want, if you find something that's okay. really, okay. really yeah. extra good. Mm. Um, but the main point of the system is that it should be small, each payment should be small and they should be a no-brainer, a mm -hmm. one-click uh, thing you don't need to think because people um, people don't want to think when they give small amounts. That's yeah. why micropayments or, or small donations doesn't work mm -hmm. uh, as it is right now. And how, how do you have any competitors? I know that Amazon had come some kind of donation service. Uh, there are lots of standard donation service. Amazon yeah. PayPal, for example, yeah. is the biggest one. Um, but PayPal is a, or those donation services is a very good example of uh, micropayments that doesn't work mm -hmm. um, because the transaction fees are, are quite high. If you give yeah. uh, if you give like one dollar, mm -hmm. uh, almost everything is, is becomes transaction fee, and the one mm -hmm. you give it to doesn't really get anything. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that. Actually, giving a donation with PayPal uh, is a bit of a hassle. You need to log in and yeah. so on. Uh, and uh, on top of that, it feels kind of awkward to give two dollars as a donation. Yeah. Um, which means that people don't do it. Mm. Uh, so donations, if you ask people who, who use PayPal, um, they get rather big donations mm. and rather sell them yeah. from people with uh, with more money than normal people mm, maybe. Mm, mm. So Flatter taps into the um, kind of the long tail mm. all the people that doesn't have um, that much money mm. but still want to give them mm. something and also each transaction but is very small so yeah. there's no mental cost or there's no no real cost really either yeah. um, but the all the small transactions uh, combined mm. Uh, the I, I feel as a consumer that it's quite strange that when, when you have this whole economic electronic systems with credit cards and PayPal and every, everything else that they have to take such a large transaction fees. Uh, yeah, so so it, it, are you able to, to lower that those costs because you're a small startup or is it something in their uh, business model that it's uh, them from, from actually, you know. Yeah, that's that's two questions. Mm -hmm. The first one is that we have a a um, actually a, a rather high fee. We, we take ten percent. Mm -hmm. um, that's much higher than the PayPal, yeah. for example, and, and PayPal is the as the highest highest fee of yeah. all payment companies. But uh, PayPal and all other companies have a fixed fee. Yeah. Uh, meaning that when a transaction becomes too small, the fixed mm -hmm. fee will will basically eat the whole cake mm. uh, and we take 10% on everything, everything. Yeah. so you can you, you can pay one cent with flatter mm. and we take 10% of one cent mm. uh, meaning that uh, it's possible to do to do uh, microtransactions and the difference in technology is that we have a system where you load up your account first mm. and then uh, we distribute the money inside our system yeah. uh, so there are payment fees when adding money uh, by a credit card, for mm. example, 
and that's uh, the biggest problem for any small payment that is done uh, very often directly from a credit card. Mm. And then Visa and Mastercard and all the other systems, mm. they uh, say how much the transaction fee mm. uh, will be. And as you probably know, there are a lot of small stores, for example, that doesn't want to take credit card payments yeah, for exactly. small amounts. And that's yeah. the same, exactly yeah. the same um, problem. Mm. So it digs down to uh, basic flaws in credit card transactions. Yeah. This year, I mean, you've been been in the focus of the, the WikiLeaks affair, and, and uh, when when uh, a lot of the big payment institutions like um, Visa Card and, and uh, Mastercard and, and PayPal refused to take donations to WikiLeaks. Yeah, uh, we we the fact is that we didn't do anything, mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of the main problem, yeah. uh, that everybody else did something, uh, and we uh, don't think that we should stipulate what you can do with your money. No. Uh, it's not our moral judgment to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happened was that, that Visa and Mastercard and PayPal said, we do not process uh, yeah. legal payments. Yeah. And they also told, Visa and Mastercard also told all, the, all their um, payment companies mm -hmm. that uses Visa and Mastercard that you cannot accept payments from any company. Yeah, I just looked at the camera. There was, was it? You can cut this out. Yeah, it was uh, recorded. Yeah. <laughs> um, that you can't accept any customer or any client that accepts the payments for the yeah. uh, And um, lots of, of payment companies just had to do as Visa Mastercard yeah. said. Because if uh, Visa Mastercard would cut their ability to transact uh, yeah, or would. do transaction for Visa Mastercard, they would lose all the customers. Yeah. Um, so it shows that the monopoly or the duopoly yeah. of Visa and Mastercard uh, actually their moral values can control what you can do with your money. Yeah. And it's kind of absurd because if you have cash in hand, uh, nobody would say, oh, this money can't be used for buying something. Yeah. That's, it's, it's your money, you can do whatever yeah. you want with them. Uh, and we think that's, that's, that's plain wrong. Uh, we have um, we have systems in society that stipulates what's legal or mm. not legal, and that's that's how it should be. Mm. Um, it's not. It should not be up to uh, companies to decide. I read the other day that that uh, uh, in Sweden um, the the mobile operators have to to uh, uh, register uh, personal numbers for all the uh, the payment uh, pay, pay, uh, telephone pay cards if you want to buy like. Um, bus ticket or whatever with SMS because because there's new le legislation where they, they try to avoid uh, a lot of man money laundering. Yeah. Uh, have you run into the same kind of problems because this I, I read that for the mobile operators this is a huge problem and, and uh, one of them said that this is just going to you know result in a lot of 13 year old standing you know at night <laughs> and being un unable to go home with a bus yeah. um, have you run into similar problems when it comes to, to uh, the authorities are afraid of money laundering or something like Ma that? Money laundering is a very very big issue and yeah. there are lots of laws around money laundering um, because of there actually needs to be rules around it. Mm. Money laundering is a big business um, but we kind of piggyback on other processors, mm -hmm. um, so they are the one who does the the actual um, money laundry um, or fraud um, protection. protection. Mm -hmm. We don't really need to do that. Mm -hmm. if, and for the mobile companies, for example, they send out their invoices or their they you, they let people buy their cards in, yeah. in the store mm -hmm. and then they are the one processing the payments, yeah. so that's then they have to uh, follow all these rules. Mm. If we would uh, do, um, like could you have a partner that actually yeah, does exactly. the process? We, we, yeah, we can say that that, or we can say we we um, um, as all the payments are processed mm. via payment providers. Yeah, uh, they are the one that are uh, really responsible for doing this. Okay, um, but it, it is a, a complete like, nightmare. Yeah, it is yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, when did you found Flutter? How old is the company? I'm not sure. We started, uh, I mean, Peter had the ideas in like 2006 and 2007. 
uh, the company was probably started some years later and we started the actual development in 2009 I think. Okay. Um, and the um, this office is like one and a half years old. Okay. And uh, what, what at what stage would you say that you are now? Are you you? Uh, we are in the growth stage. Yeah. Uh, we have a almost um, complete product mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that we have all the pieces and we have have struggled to get in place um, for for quite a long time. And now it's about um, getting the users yeah. and also um, trying to find the, our space, uh, the actual space where, where people want us to be. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, changing the product to become something that people want to use. Mm -hmm. And how many people are working with the company right now? I think we are like 14. 14? Mm -hmm. Quite large for a... Swedish startup at this stage, I would say. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, and I guess that that uh, leads to the question of money. Uh, are you bootstrapped, or did you have do you have funding? We have funding. Uh, we have made a annual, we started with an annual investment, and we have done a series of investment. Okay. And how did you did you do that? How how was the process? Because. Uh, I mean, in Sweden or in the Nordic market, we have quite a severe lack of of angel investors and early stage investors compared to to the U.S., for instance, and the sums are very much smaller. Yeah, uh, both investments are, are are done by the same people from London. Mm -hmm. um, we, I think we talked to some Swedish people, but as you say, it's 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 a rather different market. Yeah. Um, we have also talked to uh, American investors. They seldom want to do investments in Europe mm. because of distance. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the London and the Berlin startup scenes are, are, are quite nice. Yeah. Um, London is getting getting along, um, but as you say, in the US and, and um, absolutely in the Bay Area, there are, are the investors that have the, um, the big pockets mm. and, and the broader perspectives. Mm. Can you say how much uh, is invested so far? Uh, no. Secrets. Not, sorry, it's not public. Um, and what are your your um, long your your goals right now? What are you working with? Uh, are you going to start more offices as you grow the company and, and so on? We have on? we have this office in London, yeah. and then they have a office in London uh, at the um, startup parks. Incubator yeah. kind of, uh, yeah. of of our investors that we mm -hmm. have some people, um, but no, we do not plan to open any new offices. Mm -hmm. We don't have, we don't see that. I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to, to take a trip over the Atlantic and start. Uh, no, presence for several areas. reasons. Yeah. Um, the internet is a global, global market, so there is really no need for for local offices in that sense mm -hmm. either. Um, the, um, team that's placed in, in several places at the same time is also crippling mm. uh, and it's 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 not super easy to, to make it work so yeah. I, I would say it should be avoided if possible yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it's it's hard to get people in Sweden and mm. so on. So how, how do you see the the Swedish startup market as a startup scene in general? Ah, I don't really know. There's a, <laughs> um, there are lot, lots of good ideas. Um, I think there's a problem of Swedish people maybe seeing Swedish startup as a Swedish scene as, as something uh, special. But you should always think globally. Internet is, yeah. has no boundaries. And, and, um, Did you consider to start in, in? I mean, I know that Peter spends a lot of time in Germany. Did you have a idea to join for instance SoundCloud and Readmill in Berlin or No, we actually we actually got got this office to get away from um, more or less get away from from actual startup scenes. Uh -huh. okay. Um, to get things done. Mm. Not sure if it's a, if the if it's a good strategy, yeah. but it's it's a strategy we chose. Yeah. And um, What's the most important lesson that you personally have learned during these? Oh, yes, with flatter. 
that, um, you, that you could there's do. There's a lot of there's a lot of things. There's uh, there's always minefields where you don't see them. Mm. Uh, getting people is hard. Um, VC funding can be uh, boring. Administration is boring. Um, actually, getting the time to do real stuff can be hard. Yeah. Um, and I think the biggest lesson is to uh, adapt. Mm. Um, to to try look and learn. Mm. Um, and you, we were talking about business model uh, before, and and some some people say that. A startup is someone, is a company that actually is looking for their business model and their their the future path. Um, and I think that too many are starting without a clear revenue model and and without a, you know a direction. What's yeah. your your uh, views on that? Uh, that's. I went. I was in San Francisco the other weekend, and that's it's it's very clear as you say that there are. Uh, especially in the Bay Area, there are lots of startups that doesn't care about business model mm. at all. Mm. Uh, we met at Postures, for example, and they said that uh, we don't need revenue for another year. Mm. Uh, we don't even think about revenue. Mm. Um, so there's probably two different options here. The one one thing is is we are in a very special situation mm. that we actually have a revenue model from day mm. one. Uh, that's probably very very few ideas that that has that inherent um, thing in there, in, in, in the idea as such. Mm. Uh, but there, I think there's two ways. Either you have ideas of business model uh, and, and something you can hook onto uh, after a while yeah. uh, when you have users. And the other way is is uh, ramp up as many users as you possibly can and then, and then uh, solve that situation. Yeah. And it does work. Either you sell the company, um, there's, it's, it's, it's very common that, that Bigger companies buy smaller companies, mm -hmm. and uh, the business idea doesn't need to be there. The revenue model doesn't need to be there because uh, the company already makes money, and yeah. they're going to hook this idea into their existing yeah. infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure. Yeah. Um, that's of course more common when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. um, the other uh, thing is that when you have millions and millions of users, there are ways to make money, mm -hmm. um, and. Even an ID that doesn't have a revenue model can get a revenue model. Mm. Uh, Facebook is probably yeah. a very good example of that. Um, the other thing is is getting a one or several revenue uh, IDs of revenue mm. into the inherent product. Um, could be LinkedIn is a good example of of something that's kind of a copy of Facebook. Yeah. But as it's it's um, targeted on uh, work mm, and work relations, pro yeah. professionals, they knew that they could sell this information um, to people, that, uh, mm. companies that, that's looking for people. Yeah. And that's what they make their money of, mm. and they make a lot of money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so a, 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 a very small tweak mm. going from um, a social um, network that's aimed at, at, at individuals, mm. Uh, or friendships, and just tweaking that, ex uh, changing friendship to work relationships mm. could make all the difference. Yeah. Even though the products, uh, as uh, as usage, could could seem very very alike, mm. and that's 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 the um, that would be the other case of actually tweaking the ID to yeah. to fit into some existing mm. um, structure where there actually is money. Mm. And do, have you learned anything that that you think? Uh, big corporations or big companies could apply during this this road forward with Flutter. It seems like the big companies has the this idea that they um, kind of iterate on what they have, yeah, and new I and new uh, things is bought. Mm. Uh, let's buy companies that yeah. does good stuff. Um, and that's probably probably works very well, but mm. it's probably also very expensive. Uh, and I think that's could be a problem of, of lack of innovation in the company yeah. and such, or structures that allow innovation. Yeah. Um, Google is a good example of, of doing it the other way, uh, telling people you can do whatever you want mm. in your, I think it's like one day a week or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
they say Google, we as Google owns everything you do, um, but that, give, that has given them uh, lots of, of uh, new business opportunities. Gmail, for example, yeah. is, is one of them. Uh, I think almost everything actually is an idea from, from uh, someone inside the company. And that's a case of creating a um, space in the company yeah. that, that could be used as innovation. But I think also for many companies it can be very hard to retain that talent that they buy because they are so uninnovative. Yeah, sure. Um, I have a friend, and, for example, yeah. who worked at a gaming company and he said that they had a forum. Yeah. In the forum there was a thread where people could post good game ideas. Mm. And he said, I would never post anything there. Mm. I'm not that stupid that I give away my good ideas to the company. <laughs> and, and that's, that's probably um, a situation in, uh, for many of the big companies. People really don't work, want to work there. Yeah. They just do that because they, it's, it's their salary. Mm. Um, and Google is probably uh, the opposite. Mm. People want to, to share their ideas because yeah. then they can be the uh, be the main persons of a big project inside mm. Google, and that's, and that's much simpler than, than trying to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, I also think that, that innovators um, seldom ends up in big companies because mm. they don't want to be in these structures. No. Uh, they want to be their own and, and be able to do stuff, and then they they, they maybe don't really exist in, in big corporations, mm. and then it's very hard to do and to um, get an innovative um, structure. Mm. Thank you so much. Do you have any final words that you want to share? No. No? Use Flatter. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, so I have to, have to put a Flatter button on my yep. the Swedish startup uh, yes. sessions.com. So or I will hassle you. What? I will hassle you with mail and tweets and everybody <laughs> who sees this you do the same and say like, so, she's, she's, she's bad. Yeah. So go use Twitter, 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 Twitter. <laughs> <Twatter. laughs> go use Flatter, and thank you, Linus, for a very nice uh, interview.